Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every week. Oh, this video is something that I've needed to create for a long time but just uh just never realized it. My platform has become one where people recognize me for being super, super strict about the ingredients that I look for and avoid in skincare products. In all of my videos, I always talk about ingredients, what to look for, what not to look for, and then I had a realization. I'm just like, hire me, stupid bitch. You're not telling people how to avoid certain ingredients. So that's why I'm starting a new series here on my channel called Decode 101, where I'll be teaching you how to decode your ingredient lists and figure out which ingredients you want and which ingredients you don't want. Because it's me, this is going to be held to my standard of ingredients when I look for. And today's episode specifically focuses on fragrance. Now, if you've watched any of my videos within the past, I'd say like six months, I rail against fragrance like none other. Honestly, with the amount of shit that I throw at fragrance, you know, I, I, I don't know why brands just haven't canceled me altogether. I'm just, I'm very strict and very picky when it comes to fragrance in my products. I have an entire video dedicated to fragrance. If you want to watch that, I talk about why I personally don't like including fragrance in my skincare products. But in today's video, I'm just going to be focusing on the very specific ingredients that you want to look for that are fragrance. So let's get into it. Now, obviously, in my other video, I talk about why I don't like fragrance in my skincare, but just to kind of go over it real quick in this video, basically, the reason why I usually recommend avoiding fragrance is because, like, 99% of the time, fragrance offers no additional benefits besides an aromatic component to products. Basically, the only benefit that it adds to skincare products is that it smells really nice. But the problem is, is that most fragrant ingredients are very sensitizing to the skin and can contribute to long-term fragrance allergy, which fragrance allergy sucks because it's it basically means that in the future you won't be able to use any products that have fragrance in it and if you walk into certain rooms with like candles or chemical fragrance you may have a reaction to that alone. Fragrance allergy is extremely common and the number is just rising and rising as people use more and more products with fragrance in them. So for me this is of course why it's so important that I avoid fragrance but you have to know which specific ingredients to avoid and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Now uh, right off the bat this is no easy feat because under the umbrella term of fragrance, there are thousands, potentially tens of thousands of different kinds of ingredients that you will find. So we're going to go over all those thousands today. <laughs> Get ready. No, I'm just joking. I, I don't even know all of them. There's just a shit ton, but there are some really easy hacks that I use to figure out whether something is fragrance or not. So when you're looking through the ingredient list, obviously the first thing that will tell you if a product has fragrance is the most obvious. It, it'll say fragrance or parfum. A lot of times this refers to a synthetic fragrance, but sometimes it can be natural fragrance. Regardless, they're both really irritating and one of the problems with this umbrella term of fragrance included in the ingredient list is that they could be using two ingredients or they could be using a thousand. You honestly have no idea. That is completely private to the company and under the laws within the USA, companies are not required to disclose that so that they kind of have their private signature scent. But this is very problematic for us because we don't know what they're including. So usually when I see fragrance or perfume, I'm just like, eh. Next, I am trying to avoid that as much as possible. I do want to say as well, yes, I'm very picky when it comes to fragrance, but I am okay with it in a few of my products, like maybe one or two, especially if it's a wash off treatment. It's not super bothersome to me. One of the reasons I preach avoiding fragrance so fucking hard on my channel is because most people use products where every single one of them has fragrance. And I really just want to push people to try to just make little steps to avoid fragrance within your skincare routine. The second type of ingredient that I usually look for is an ingredient called Called linalool and this is basically a component of lavender and coriander this one is really irritating and it's usually paired alongside fragrance at the end of an ingredient list something you definitely want to avoid and another similar one like that is limonene linalool and limonene are the two most common fragrance ingredients that I find within products limonene is really problematic because not only is it a synthetic fragrance that's very irritating to the face limonene is definitely something that you want to try to avoid as much as possible like keep those in your head because those are like the 
top three that I recommend just to watch for and avoid. Usually if you'll find any of those ingredients in a product, you're probably going to find a whole bunch of other fragrance ingredients in there as well. So it's just, it's just best to avoid. Now let's get into essential oils. This is the one that can be the most tricky when it comes to fragrance, but one of the most important in terms of finding out whether a product does include fragrance or not. Now I'm just going to start off with the cheat hack that I use. It's impossible to know each scientific term for every essential oil out there because say one essential oil can have like 20 different names for it. It's really difficult, but one of the easiest ways to tell whether or not something is an essential oil is that it will always afterwards say fruit extract or oil. Now, am I saying that all fruit extracts or fruit oils are bad? Not at all. There's some really good ones like sunflower seed oil, avocado oil, centelia or green tea extract. There's honestly a lot of good ones. So I'm definitely not saying that if you see fruit extract or an oil on something, you're like, oh, avoid. Don't do that because you could be missing out on some really good benefits. But one thing I want to encourage you to do is that if you're looking through an ingredient and you do see a fruit extract or an oil, just like look a second time and see what it is. If you don't know what that ingredient is, this is what I'm going to be sharing for the whole video. There is an amazing website that I use to research every single ingredient that I have a question about. It's paulaschoice.com. If you search on Google the name of the ingredient and then Paula's Choice after it, there will be an entire page dedicated with scientific research backing it up determining whether the ingredient is good for your skin or not good for your skin. And they'll explain everything as to why. Paula's Choice has been an incredible resource for me in terms of helping me decode ingredients within products. Like it's what I've used for years now and I have stuck to it and it's always the resource that I go to no matter what. In addition to this, another trick that I use is that when you're looking through an ingredient list and you see fruit extract, a lot of times companies will include in parentheses the more common name of the ingredient. Just like when it comes to like names of animals, there's the scientific name and then there's the commonly known name and that's how it works for skincare ingredients as well and it's really helpful when companies put the more commonly known name in parentheses within that ingredient on the back of the box so a lot of times it'll show like avocado or sunflower or lavender it just makes it a lot more helpful if you do find a box where they include a lot of fruit extracts or fruit oils and they don't include the parentheses of like the common term honestly in my experience I have yet to find a really trustworthy company that doesn't do this because a lot of times when they don't include the more common name they're trying to hide some ingredients from you and so my personal thing is that I just don't really trust companies when they don't include that friendly parentheses because by now like hey it's 2019 we're all reading our ingredient list you need to level up as a company so now that those hacks are out of the way I'm gonna talk about some of the specific ones that I recommend you should avoid more than just like any the first ones being citrus oils citrus oils are the most irritating of all essential oils simply because of their acidity Acidity. Essential oils are fruit extracts that are concentrated at a very, very high level. And when you have something like lemon or lime, which is very acidic for the skin already and can throw off the natural pH level of the skin, putting something that concentrated on top of your skin can be really problematic. So that's why a lot of research and dermatologists say to avoid citrus oils or citrus fruit extracts specifically because of those irritating benefits. Now you may see a lot of companies that are like, oh, we use, you know, grapefruit and orange, lime and lemon as exfoliants for your skincare. I honestly kind of call BS on this because there's so many better exfoliants out there that aren't as irritating or stripping to the skin. For example, glycolic acid or lactic acid, amazing extracts from natural ingredients that are incredible for dissolving dead skin cells off the face instead of grapefruit or lime or lemon, which are gonna be highly irritating and could cause fragrance allergy. The main ones I recommend looking out for are bergamot extract, lime extract, lemon extract, orange extract, and anything you see with a citrus extract on it. These are just the number one thing that I always try to avoid. In addition to this, the other essential oils that I also recommend looking out for are lavender extract, which is one of the most common essential oils and products. I don't know why so many products love to formulate with a shit ton of lavender, but honestly, it's really annoying. So you're probably gonna find lavender a lot. Also sandalwood extract, neroli oil, rose flower extract, ylang ylang oil, peppermint oil, and similar ones like that. Obviously, I can't say every single one of them because there's thousands out there, but these are the most common ones that I come across. It's very rare that I will find other essential oils included in a product besides these ones. And honestly, the main theme that I have for this video, guys, is that if you see any of these questionable ingredients, you may not know that, oh, that one's bergamot or, oh, that one's lavender. But if you see fruit extract or oil, I really recommend just double checking it on Paula's Choice. There's so many times where I still don't 
don't know all the scientific names for essential oils. And I find myself always being like, wait, what's that one again? And then I look it up on Paula's Choice and I'm like, oh, duh, it's orange, duh. So I always recommend just double checking because it could be a really beneficial fruit extract that's really good for your skin that you didn't even realize. Now, after all of this, the biggest recommendation that I have to make it 1000% easier on you so where you won't have to go searching through ingredient lists is to just buy from brands that are fragrance and essential oil free. A lot of people don't know that there's a lot of options out there. The main ones, my favorites, being Drunk Elephant, Youth to the People, The Ordinary, CeraVe, Crave Beauty, Paula's Choice, and so many other brands. These brands I can always trust to never have fragrance and only have beneficial ingredients and it makes it so much easier for me because I don't have to go to every single product and be like, okay, let me pull out my computer and search Paula's Choice for every single one of these ingredients. It's just so much easier because you can actually have trust in the brand that they are doing what's best for your skin. If you are interested in looking at any of the products from these lines, I've included links in the description box below so you can look through all of the products that they offer. But yeah, these are just my favorite brands and if you're not new to my channel, you probably know that out of all the brands I talk about, 90% of them are these brands that I just listed. So it's it just makes it so much easier for you. But again, I do have to say, if you are a person who does like fragrance in your ingredients, I still think this is a beneficial way for you to learn about how to look for certain ingredients because it's best that we all are aware of what our products are formulated with. More knowledge, more power. Whew, that was a lot of science and I loved it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Feel free to comment like what your hacks or tricks are for easily finding fragrance and products. I really want to know and be sure to let me know which types of ingredients you want me to talk about for the next Decode 101 episode. I'm super excited to start this series and I can't wait to see your guys' support. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.